100 years ago, Altona consisted of just 11 houses and a population of 20. In July 1915, two weeks before the First World War was declared, the founders of Altona State School, Lawrence and Anne Fleming, moved to Altona with their family. Just as Altona was beginning to grow, Australia went to war. 100 years since the start of World War I, we wonder how the tragedy of war affected this small but slowly developing town. As a community, we know very little about the personal sacrifices and the stories of these men and women. Because Altona, as we know it, did not exist. These service men and women would have been included in the tally of our neighbouring shires. Our centre tower, situated in front of the Altona Civic Offices, has no recording of World War I and as age wearies those left behind, the job of tracing, researching and recording these stories becomes all the more challenging. We know that the Altona Football Club was established in 1918 in a Pier Street cafe by a local man named James Duke. Duke's son George was the first soldier from Altona to return home after the war. His battalion colours, purple and gold, were adopted by the newly formed Altona Football Club as their jersey colours. These colours today reflect the pride that is Altona Primary School. 100 years on, we remember those men and women who went to war. Those very lives live on today in the spirits of our students. Here are their stories. My great-great-grandfather, Michael McCarthy, was just 21 when he enlisted for war on the 1st of March 1916. He departed for Egypt aboard the Port Lincoln. After training in Egypt, he was sent to England where he was transferred to the 15th Machine Gun Company. He came under occasional shrapnel fire during his work. In January 1918, he was transferred to the 59th Battalion and lightly took part in the famous counter-attack at Phillies Bretoni. In July, he was promoted to Lance Corporal. In August that year, he was wounded in battle and sent back to Australia on the 1st of March 1919, three years to the day after he enlisted. He lived in Footscray and died in 1969. I'm proud to be part of his memory. Our great-great-uncle Frederick Woodbury was born in 1893. Before going to war, he was a butcher, a clerk and a driver. When war was declared, he joined the AIF. He was part of the second wave in the landings at Gallipoli on the 25th April 1915. After being at Gallipoli, he was evacuated because he had a fever. After being in hospital in Egypt, he went to England where he was confirmed to be suffering from tuberculosis. At Gallipoli, he was injured when he was hit in the back by shrapnel casing and badly hurt. He was evacuated back to Australia, arriving late December 1915. In 1917, he married Grace Matthews and he died on the 22nd of February 1926 aged only 33. His strength and legacy lives on in us today. Our great-great-uncles Quinton and Robert Dick enlisted into the 21st Battalion and went to war in July 1916. Great-great-uncle Quinton went to battle in France in February 1970, where he was wounded by shell fire and evacuated to England. After a few months of recovery, he was sent back to rejoin his unit in France. He was involved in many battles, but on the 17th of May 1918, he was killed. His personal items were sent to his mother, which included a metal cigarette case, tobacco pouch, a letter, and a damaged watch. Great-great-uncle Robert was also wounded in late 1918, receiving a gunshot wound and was discharged not fit for duty and sent back to Australia. Their bravery remains with us today, and we are very proud of them. Our great-grandfather James Edward Barker was 24 years old when he went to war in 1914. He was the fifth of ten children. He was paid one shilling per day, which is about 10 cents for fighting in the war. During his time, he received four medals, including the Military Medal for Bravery. He also became the Lance Corporal on the 4th of July 1916. He didn't die during the war, but he got shot in the hand and was exposed to mustard gas, which affected his for the rest of his life. Our great-grandfather, James Edward Barker, was allocated into the 3rd Company, the 14th Battalion. After training at Broad Meadows, he embarked aboard the Barama on the 22nd of December, 1914, to go to war. 
He thought he was going to fight in France, but landed at Anzac Cove on the afternoon of the 25th of April, 1915, which today we know as Anzac Day. For the next four months, the battalion was heavily involved in defending the Anzac front line. He was actively involved in the war until 1918. The soldiers who had enlisted at the beginning of the war were being sent back to Australia for leave, and our great-grandfather embarked for home in September. The war ended while he was travelling home. In 1967, the government released a Gallipoli medallion for all surviving soldiers who fought there. There was no record to show he received it, but we know he was certainly entitled to it. Young Eve Misford has a number of relatives on her mother's side who were involved in World War I. Charles Stabell was born in Williamstown to Norwegian mariner Didrik Stabell and his wife Harriet. He earned his living as a tinsmith. When he was about 18 years old, he joined the Naval Reserves completing four and a half years before enlisting in the 14th Battalion of the AIF in March 1915. Only after a few weeks of training, Charles embarked aboard a ship. Records suggest that he arrived at Gallipoli on the first day of August 1915 and was killed in action soon after. Sadly, there is no record of a known grave. Eve's family continue to investigate their connections to the Anzacs. They know that Keen Charles Congdon and Reuben Congdon, who were brothers of Eve's great-great-grandfather, and Roy Joseph Kingsman and Leslie Joseph Kingsman, who were the nephews of Eve's great-grandfather, were also at war. My great-great-grandfather, William John Lavers, was born in 1875 in Quiswick, Victoria. He married in 1896 and had four children. He was a mining engineer and went to war in February 1916. The ship arrived in Egypt in April, but it couldn't go through the Suez Canal because it was dangerous and instead it went to France. On the 12th of September there was a big bombing and my great-great-grandfather died. He was buried at Point du Hem military century in France and we are lucky to have visited his grave. 100 years on, these stories will serve as a reminder of the service and sacrifice of our forebearers. 100 years on, as we remember the Anzacs, we also celebrate a centenary of our school's rich history.